Tozer. <laughs> I always have fun with Tozer. He reminds me of... I don't know what he reminds me of, as a matter of fact. Every time I look at him, I think of the guy that was in the old Superman movies, you know, on black and whites, you know. He was one of the publishers, I think. I mean, he doesn't look like him, but he reminds me of him. And, you know, you ever, like, start off in a direction and you know you're going the wrong way? You go, ah, it doesn't look right. Uh, I don't know, this kind of looks like the wrong direction. And you just keep going until, you know, it just keeps getting worse and worse and you start thinking, you know what, maybe I better turn around and go the other direction. You know, something just doesn't seem like I'm going the right way. Well, that's basically what repentance really means, is that it means turning from one direction to another, you know. And we apply all this extra meaning to it when we say about the propitiation and the, you know, sanctification and the atonement and the, you know, whole structure about what God did for us. But really, repent just simply means to turn from the right to the left, or the left to the right, or forward to back, you know, so to speak. And when I find things running really smooth, you know, it's like, I like when God looks down on something you're doing and he blesses it, you know, he pours himself into it. He reveals who he is through it and lets you be just a participant in it. And I think that's what real ministry is best defined as, is that in my mind, now, you know, I could be wrong, you know, I'm perfectly content to let the Holy Spirit do whatever he wants to do, but in my mind, I always think of ministry like being, I'm sitting in the back seat and God is speaking through me and I get to listen as much as the other people get to see what vessel he's using at the time. And sometimes I'm just as shocked <laughs> at what comes out of my mouth as other people are. And I mean in a good way. Because there are times that God is speaking to me through what the words are being spoken as though I invented them and I didn't. So I'm wondering someday if God doesn't call me on the carpet on this one, but I honestly think that, you know, I would love to take the time to go through the entire Word of God, you know, entire Bible, you know, cover to cover, and not do what most people do. You know, it's like, if you're an ex expositional teacher and you, you know, start from Genesis and you go all the way through to Revelation, then that's what I'm talking about. You know, you go line upon line, piece upon piece up, you drag it out, explain it, you know, tell your little story, you know, and get people to identify with it, you know, and then you connect it to the dots, you know, and you make it fit for a personal application and you kind of go all together with it and boom, you know, you've got a format and a formula and you go that way. You know, it's pretty obvious in these emotionals, you know, <laughs> they aren't rehearsed. <laughs> they certainly are practiced and most definitely they're not read ahead of time. I like that. You know, Jesus said that when they bring it, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a context, so let's keep it in context. He did mean when you were brought up before judges and all that, which I, you know, had the enjoyable pleasure to do in Jerusalem before a rabbinical council one time. And believe me, God will give you the words to speak, especially if you're in a rabbi, you know, but, or you're dealing with the rabbis. But the point being is, Jesus said that when you come before man and they, you know, bring you up before courts and all these things. Don't think about what you're going to say ahead of time, for your Father will give you what to speak in that moment. And, you know, I, maybe I got carried away with that, but I took it to mean all the time. <laughs> so, when I was teaching Bible studies, I didn't prepare. <laughs> you know, I just said, God, take me there, you know, and basically that's my preparation. And then recently when I was over in uh, oh, a local city here, I can't even think of the name of it, but... A church asked me to come speak, and I kept thinking, you know, Lord, you know, all week long I was bugged, you know, well, God, you know, I mean, even though I've been a Christian all this time, and, you know, I hadn't really spoken in a while, they asked me to come speak, and I thought, well, what do you want to talk about, Lord? I said, I don't know what I want to talk about. What do you want to talk about? I didn't really get anything, so I said, well, and I told them in the tape, you know, I don't really know what we're going to do here, because the only thing I wrote down on my notes was where I came from, where I'm going, and where I am today, and... I left that in the car and locked it in the car and left the keys in the car. And, you know, the Lord took over and they were blessed. And, you know, it's kind of fun. You know, and that's what I believe that 
real ministry is, is when we can let God be God and we just kick back and see what the Lord may do or say. And maybe that's not structured enough for some, but you know, within context and within certain parameters, you know, because I do try to keep these short too, within certain parameters, I think that God has blessed this, you know, especially now with these little details that I'm about to describe is, I really like this idea of, you know, like sitting out here and not being inside because it looks so much prettier, you know, for me filming it, but then afterwards looking at just a short clip of it, I went, hey, that looks kind of nice, you know, because I don't watch the whole thing. I, I, you know, God spoke to me. I don't know what he's going to speak to you, but it's kind of nice. So hopefully we can keep doing this, you know, in the same way, you know, unless God takes me inside because of heat prostration and I kick the air conditioning on. But Tozer today, I have no idea what he's saying. Because God is the one who inspired him, so let's see what God inspires with us from Tozer. Everything God does is worthy of our praise. No, I did not set this up. <laughs> uh, but God set me up. <laughs> God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. It is characteristic of the unregenerate man that he sees God only in nature, and of the immature Christian that he can see God only in grace. Because sin has injured us so deeply, and because the whole transaction of repentance and deliverance from the guilt and power of iniquity makes us make such a mighty impression upon us emotionally, we naturally tend to appreciate the work of God in redemption more than in nature. But everything God does is praiseworthy and deserves our deepest admiration. Whether he is making or redeeming the world, he is perfect in all his doings and glorious in all his goings forth. Yet the long, long ages, however far they may carry us into the mysteries of God, will still find us singing the praises of the Lamb that was slain. For it is hardly conceivable that we sinners can ever forget the wormwood and the gall. We human sinners, above all other creatures, have benefited by his grace, so it is altogether natural that we, above all others, should magnify the blood that bought us and the mercy that pardoned us of all our sins. Yet we glorify God's redeeming grace no less when we glorify his creating and sustaining power. If we miss seeing God in his works, we deprive ourselves of the sight of a royal display of wisdom and power so elevating, so ennobling, so awe-inspiring as to make all attempts at description futile. Such a sight the angels behold day and night, forever, and ask nothing more to make them perpetually satisfied. You know, for me, you know, you just won't apply to you because, you know, you weren't there. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but for me, as I read some of the earlier devotionals, my little practical blessing about what I'm kind of like praising the Lord for and I'm really thrilled about is just this simple table, you know, that I'm sitting at and the whole idea that if I waited a few more hours to record maybe tomorrow's or the next day's devotional and not worry about whether it's the same day but God can use it anyway, that I found that I could praise him for just the little things that he showed me with which way to go and what to do in order to bring about the complete picture of what he wanted to say and share and do. Or be. And you know, I like that kind of God. I like it when God wants to not so much give you what you want, but he's already got planned for you something that's going to make you happy. And for me, I have always been a very simple, practical person. I will take cardboard and make it into something that I enjoy. I designed my diets so that I would enjoy McDonald's burgers because I knew they would never get expensive. I like the dollar menu. You know, all the little things that, you know, seem silly to other people. For me, it's personal to God and I because we have grown together in a way that when I go to look for and how I make my purchases, when I consider something that I want to buy, when I pray about something that I'm going to do, when I take him in everything that I look at and consider, then I want them to remind me that God was there and God is here and that God is with me. And so when I do, uh, then you see what you see, like I am today. Happy, peaceful, content. Because I'm glad that the Lord brought me to a place of trying things and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And when it's just right, you just relax and just be real.
and share the things that are on your heart and talk about the one you love and you describe what you've done with him and how he's done it with you. And then when other people see the same and do the same and enjoy it, I'm blessed because God makes me feel that connection. Even though I can't see you, I can't see God either. Okay, maybe I can, but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sometimes he does open up the doors. But anyways, even though I can't see you, I know when you're blessed, I'll feel it. Even as you can feel when I am. Because we're joined together, you and I, and we're family. The family of God that God has brought together to be blessed in his devotion and in his, his devotional, devotional way. You know he loves you. <laughs> and so do I.